Good evening, Hope, for today. Good evening. So good to see you. Let's stand. Colossians 2, starting at verse 6 to 11. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we bow before you tonight, and we thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for coming, fully God, fully human, to show us yourself, Lord, to reveal your plan of salvation and to accomplish it. Lord Jesus, would you keep us focused on you, Lord, and the gospel. Help us not to go to the right or to the left, but to stay focused on you on the truth, Lord, and remain in you steadfast and faithful. We thank you and we praise you for the joy that you have filled our hearts with in knowing you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's sing House of the Lord. We're here. It's good to be here together. We have so much to celebrate. Let's praise him together tonight.
thank you for your love and your grace and your salvation.
given this to us, Lord. We just pray that you would just increase our faith, Lord God. Increase our faith. Increase our trust in you, Lord Jesus. May we trust you in all things, Lord God. Rely on your strength. We just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm just wondering if anyone has a testimony they would like to share of God's faithfulness this week. Has God shown his faithfulness to anyone this week in any way? Anybody want to share? Take a second and think about it. I, uh, I always like talking about God's faith. And, uh, I try to give other people a chance, but uh, you know, everyone's being shy this evening. Uh, God is always so good. Throughout every week, throughout every day, uh, when, you, when you allow God to work in you and through you, when you listen to his voice and he gives you opportunities to share the gospel with someone, it, it's amazing. It really is, and and it fills you. If you think you're a Christian, but you don't have that joy that we sing about, you don't uh, you don't feel. You look at some people like Jenny, and you go, she she just always looks so happy. Why don't I feel like that? And it's because I feel like you're missing out on a very vital point of your Christianity, and that is telling people about the good news that's working inside of you. And it's, uh, it, it does something to you. It stirs you up when you think about it, when you're explaining it to someone else, what God's doing. And it, it, it brings that joy to the surface. Okay? So I, I don't know. This week I've had lots of opportunities to, to share Jesus with people. Uh, one of my work colleagues, we went on a trip to Ottawa. And it was great, good Catholic boy. But I got to explain to him that that's right. So, so, you know, he's got some confused ideas, and, but to explain to him how Jesus actually works and, uh, and, and how we don't need priests, we, uh, we have Jesus. And so that was a, a great opportunity. Even the, uh, the men's breakfast that we had the other day, whoever got to go to that, uh, the old man forgot to text most people. But then we had, but then we had random people show up. Like, I don't even know who these people are. And, and so it's great. And uh, you can really be active. If, if you are not feeling that joy, but you have Jesus, there's something missing. So, so look into that and uh, try sharing Jesus with someone. Because there's so many hurting people. And although Instagram and all those things look like people don't want to talk about God, they, they want hope. They, they don't really care where it comes from. Because you see all the weird things going on out there. They're looking, and they're willing to accept even the weirdness. Okay? So, so That's what beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Brian? Um, last week, I was supposed to leave work on Saturday, but financially, I could not afford to. So for God all the more reason, they called me to work anyways, and the Lord blessed me with $100 So he met my needs for the week, and everything worked out real good. Praise the Lord, his provision. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Thanks for sharing, Brian. Sharon? Something so simple, eh? And makes such a difference. I just think, um, well, I just know that, um, like what Paul said, oh, you know, look at Jenny, she's got so much joy. <laughs> well, you know, there, there are days when we don't feel maybe necessarily happy um, or, you know, we're weary. Um, I get weary, I get tired like physically sometimes just because of my work and, and stuff. And, um, 
he's so faithful and like just talking to him every day even even not seeing the sunshine like this time of year and like lord i just miss the sunshine and then you wake up this morning there's sunshine and you know all of those those little blessings and just that he cares so much about everything and every little thing and that i can be honest with him and, and come to him and say lord i'm really tired today i'm weary um would you you know fill me with your strength and and remind me of all you've done and and give me that joy back and he does it's all him right amen thanks for sharing everybody um pastor Ruel. pastor Ruel is coming to the the finish line of harvest and and then he's gonna go home and see his family we're so glad you're here Good evening. Good evening. Blessing and greetings be unto you. I know it's not, it's not the usual voice, so I'm not going to get a great response if it was Pastor Brian. <laughs> 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 Nevertheless, ju just the smiles on your face says it all. I I'm so happy and blessed to be here and that I'm given this opportunity that I can share with you in the fellowship. It's prayer time, and, and, and you know, just like I said that, some prayers we can sing, just like I feel led to do with, with this one. This little song cheers me throughout the week. You know, I'm at work, and this song is on my heart, and I, I sing it to myself because I believe there's, there's messages in the song for me. Prayer, testimony, and everything is in the song. This writer must have, you know, really, really meet the Lord. And, and he just poured it out when he, when, he sing, when he penned this little song. My stubborn will at last had yielded. I would be thine and thine alone. And this the prayer my lips are bringing, Lord, let in me thy will. I don't like to stand still sometimes. <laughs> Be done, sweet will of God, still fold me closer. Till I am wholly lost in thee, sweet will of God, still fold me closer, till I am wholly lost in thee. I'm tired of sin. Food sore and weary, the darksome part had dreary grown. But now a light has risen to cheer me, I find in thee my star, my son, sweet will of God. Still fold me closer till I am wholly lost in thee. Sweet will of God, still fold me closer till I am wholly lost in Thy precious will, O conquering Savior, does now embrace and compass me. All this God's hush, my peace a river, my soul a prison bird, set free. 
Sweet will of God Still fold me closer Till I am wholly lost in thee Sweet will of God Still fold me I am wholly lost in thee, shut in with thee, O Lord, forever, my wayward feet, no more to roam, what power from thee, my soul, God's will, my home, sweet will of God, stick, fold me closer, till I am wholly lost in thee, sweet will of God, still fold I am wholly lost in thee. Loving God and our Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercies and grace. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for your people. We thank you for blessing us, Lord, that we can assemble in this fashion. And even now, Heavenly Father, as I share with your saints, I pray, Almighty God, that you will send the anointing, a fresh anointing that will break the yoke and bring deliverance. Strengthen us now, we pray. Encourage us, O oh God, by your words. You. As we look to you, Father, knowing that your words will not return to your void, but it shall accomplish that which you please, that it may give bread to the eater and seed to the sower. So shall your words be that void for. Hear us now, we pray. We look to you now, and we crave your blessing and tell you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 You know, I must, I must confess to you that I sing all the verses of the song because there are times when we sing some songs and we try to cut out a verse here and cut out a verse there uh, because of how quick we want to get through. And, and, and please, I'm not saying this because I'm going to be long. The mere fact that I sing the whole song, you know, the message is going to be short. All right? But what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we try to cut a couple of verses out of the song because of hurry. And we just cut out somebody's message. So we still got to be careful how we, you know, chop out certain verses, right? Somebody just lose their message. The very verse that we go over or skip, somebody needed to hear that verse because somebody's message is in that verse. All right? So I'm just saying that so that you can pardon me for singing the whole song because each verse means something to somebody. Amen? Amen. The, the song is one that if I should really comment on the song and speak on it, that should be the message for the night. And then I, I could just, you know, give the benediction and we close. <laughs> yes, but I believe this, this, this person, this writer, would have been someone who didn't meet the Lord, didn't accept Christ, and would have been like some stubborn, stiff-necked persons who we, at times, we minister to, but they are so stubborn, so, you know, still not, not willing to yield. But eventually, yes, grace reaches heart. And he surrendered. <laughs> so he said, my stubborn will at last had yielded. I would be dying and dying alone. So many of us, we would be more than who we are today. If, if, if we heed the call at the very first call. 
So he said, and this is the prayer my lips are bringing. Lord, let in me, thy will be done. Just like I want the Lord to do for me tonight. Not my will, but let your will be done. I like the verse where he said that, I'm tired of sin, foot sore and weary. The darksome part had dreary grown. Think of the times of your life when, when we were walking in darkness. And the darkness gradually keeps growing more and more. It gets darker and darker. But after we accept Christ, now we can say, but now a light has risen to cheer me. And who is that light that is risen to cheer us? Jesus. That's Christ. He is the light that is risen to cheer me. And for that, he could testify and say, I find in thee my star, my son. So it means then that if we find someone who is like the star to us, and who is like the sun to us, we won't be walking in darkness anymore. Because the stars light up the, 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 the night skies, amen, and the sun brightens the day. So if we find all of that in Christ, if we find it to be our star, we find it to be our sun, then our path will be bright all the days of our life. I hear somebody in a song say that, if I have Jesus, Jesus only, then my sky will have a gem because he's the sun of brightest splendor, yes, and he is the star of Bethlehem. So the writer knows Knows what he is saying. Here's another verse that said, Thy precious will, O conquering Savior, does now embrace and compass me. He surrounds us. Well, we, we know what compass is all about. He surrounds us. God's precious will embrace and compass, he compass us. So the writer said, All this cause, hush. My peace a river. I have peace like a river in my soul. I want to say to you, saints, when, when many of you were to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you made the decision, and when you break away from some friends and some company, there were mockings and jeerings. They were criticizing. Yes, and, and they said a lot of bad things about you. There were a lot of discord. But sometimes you just got to look them in the face and say, Hush! All the discords, all the contrariness, you can hush. Hold your peace, keep quiet. Because my soul that was a prison bird is now set free. And if you know what it was like to be a prison bird, you don't have to be going, going in the natural prison or whatever it is. But just to be a slave to sin, Makes us prison bird. Satan has us bound and we become prison bird. But we can testify at like the writer and say, all this cause, just hush. Keep your peace. Hold your peace. Because my soul that was a prison bird, I have freedom. I have peace like a river in my soul. The last verse said, shut in with the Oh Lord forever, my wayward feet, no more to roam. What power from thee my soul can sever? What power? Who is out there to separate you? We know Romans 8 very well, 38, 39, and, and many verses. Who shall separate me from the love of God? And we, we could go on. So the writer is saying, what power from thee my soul can sever? It means that what power is out there to separate you from God? When the center of God's will is your home. Sweet will of God, still fold me closer till I am wholly lost in thee. I want to be lost in him. I want to be lost in his will. And not my way. Let me, let me quickly just rush on to a few things that I wanted to share with the saints. 
And I, I have a little topic that I said, fellowship and its spiritual growth. Fellowship and its spiritual growth. I, I, I'm amazed of the, the growth of the church. The church is growing. I'm amazed. I see saints coming in. I mean, souls being born again. The new birth experience has taken place for a lot of persons for which we are so happy and glad. But I just want to remind, especially our newly converts, and, and it is for all of us, of expectations and how the early church, how the saints, how they grow their faith in Christ. And since some of these things are in my head, I might not open the book, but I will just go through and, and, and share. And the presenter might, might show a couple of things, if he actually chose to. But then I, I look back at Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost, and when, 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 when Peter and the other apostles, and when they speak to the, to the multitude, the congregation of people, and, and they preach Christ, and, and many believed and were baptized. And the Bible said that about 3,000 souls were added to the church. But I, I, I look very careful at Acts 2, verse 42, what the writer said. He says that, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. And I'm going to pause here a bit before I go on. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Doctrine and fellowship goes together, right? The apostles' doctrine is the apostles' teachings. Amen? Amen. So it means then that a lot of teachings can take place during fellowship. Amen, church? Amen. So they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread. That's the Lord's Supper that we have, the Holy Communion. Amen? Amen. And in prayers. Don't leave all that. They continued steadfastly in communion. They continued steadfastly in prayers. So to grow your faith, to have spiritual growth, you got to be a part of these things. Make yourself a part. Participate. Don't be a, a, a bystander. Don't tell yourself that, oh, I'm now in the kingdom of God. I got baptized and I'm now in, in heaven. It's okay with me now. No, you, you got to grow spiritually. Amen in grace. No, I want us also to look at Hebrews. Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verses 23, 24, and 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. For he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exalting one another and so much the more as they see the day approaching. And I believe everyone knows the day we're talking about, what day approaching, mm -hmm. the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. but, but, let me, but let me go back to verse 24 that says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work. Believers, we got to provoke one another. We got to provoke some, some persons who are forsaking the assembly of themselves. We got to provoke them unto love, unto good work. So the writer said we should consider them and provoke them unto love. For example, Sister
Sister Jane don't show up for quite a few weeks. For example, Brother Joe don't show up for quite a few weeks. Call them up. Get in touch with them. Provoke them. Let them know of the good things that is happening at church. Good things happening at the fellowship. So provoke them. Provoke them to love. We, we don't want them to lose out. We want them to be a part of the fellowship and a part of the kingdom of God. That they too can make it into heaven. So the writer said, consider one another and provoke unto love. And if you sometimes you're talking to some person, you're even trying to witness to some person, and they, they, they give you some kind of ugly looks and bad looks and shake off and them, them rock and them twist and them do all manner of things and give you some kind of wave, then I don't have the time for you. You, you know, those, those kind of things. But you, you still provoke, you just stop provoke them. You still provoke them about Christ until eventually you win them. Amen? Because some of them do it ignorantly, not knowing what they're doing. Amen? So we should consider each other. Provoke unto love. Let them come and fellowship and come and grow their faith in Christ. Now, one of my key verse that, that are also good for fellowship is Colossians 3 and verse 16. Colossians 3 16 says, Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing. You see, it comes right back to the teaching. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Right? Teaching and admonishing one another. That means if we, we should admonish everyone, give good advice. We see a sister might be going out of line, out of line. We give advice, admonish, correct, and guide. In the faith. Admonishing one another with psalms and hymns. And spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And you know, you, you know a verse that complement that very well? I'm gonna tell you. Ephesians 5:19 complement Colossians 3:16 very well. Ephesians 5:9 said, Speak into yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now I'm going to tell you something. We got to speak to ourselves. But you, you see, that verse, that verse is, is more for a mature person, mature Christians. When you are mature, when, when you store away, when you store away in your heart some psalms, you store away in your heart some, some scriptures, you store away some good deeds, some the words of God in your heart, when you find yourself now in some situations, like I find myself recently, and can't be on a fellowship, amen, you speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I happens to be away from the fellowship for quite a few weeks, but this is, this is what I do. This is, this is the verse that speaks to me. Ephesians 5.19 tells me that I should speak to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make melody in my heart to the Lord. you got to do that along your journey, saints. Have a melody. Don't lose your melody. Even when you're at work, sometimes some things are happening around you that could drive you to despair. And, and, and ruin the whole week. But you got to sing and make melody in your heart. The melody that you make is unto the Lord. That's what the scripture is saying. So you sing and you make your melody to the Lord. You're communicating, you're worshiping God. Even when you're all by yourself. You don't get yourself involved and engaged in idle gestures, foolish talkings. No! Sing 
and make melody. Make a melody in your heart. Now, the house of God is, is a place for refresh, refreshing, rejuvenating, revitalizing. It should not be saints of God that you you have a rough week. Because sometimes at work something can happen around you. You just have to dig deep. But you hold on. And you look forward to Sunday and you say, you know what? I know Sunday coming. I'm going to be at the fellowship. Good things happen in that church. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm going to hold on. I know the day is coming. The break is coming. And when I will be a, we will be moved away from all this. And I will be at church in the presence of God. So you hold on. And listen. Sometimes, because of what happened throughout the week, even at work, you come to church with a sad countenance. But it should not be that you come to the house of God with a sad countenance and leave with a sad countenance. No, it's not supposed to happen. You're supposed to leave the house of God with a smile on your face. Things must change. It can't be that you go back the same way you came. There must be a smile. There must be a word. There must be something to lift your spirit. So you look forward to Sunday. You look forward to the fellowship. Because there you know God is going to refresh you. I can remember, I can remember when Peter and John met, met the lame man at the beautiful gate. And when the man received his miracle and they went to the temple at the porch, Solomon's porch, the people were there wondering. They were full of amazement and were asking Peter and, and, and John some question. What had happened? How this man be healed? How is he whole? And, and, and they testified to, to the people that it, it's Jesus whom they crucified. It's part in his name that give this man this song the next. So they wanted to know what they should do. And Peter said to the people, and, and this is Acts, Acts, Acts 3 verse 19, he said, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. When we come in the presence of the Lord, saints, it's a time of refreshing. Amen. So whatever I might have gone through throughout the week, when I'm coming, I leave it up there. And if I come and if I'm a little bit sad, I must be going home glad. All the all the, the, the disfigured faces must be erased. We must leave the house of God with a smile. Listen, I, I, I grew up in Sunday school, you know. <laughs> and one of the Sunday school songs, one of the Sunday school songs we, we oftentimes sing, says that we are but little children, we nor born in the highest state. What can we do for Jesus' sake? Who is so high and good and great? There is also a verse, a verse in the song that says, With smiles of peace and looks of love, light in our dwelling we may make. Be kind, good humor, bright and dear, and still do all for Jesus' sake. With smiles of peace and looks of love. We can light up the house of God. Smiles of peace and looks of love. Listen, if the first time I came here, and if when I come, I see no, no smiles of peace and no looks of love, be gone. I will, I will come back. No, I will return. Then if all I see is fear, sad faces, all 
have sad faces, no smiles, no peace, it would have encouraged me to return. So the writer is saying that with smiles of peace, you can, you know, you can make somebody's day only with, with just a smile. Yes. Person might be going through some situation and having some issues. And just a smile. Just change. Just change the whole scene. And the person wants to come again. You, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say anything to me. Everybody cannot associate with me at the same one time. But, yeah, greet you, I greet you, brother, and I greet you, too. I smile at you. I love you in the name of the Lord. You know, we're, we're there for each other. Mm -hmm. But I want to encourage you, saints, that you, you don't give up. In spite of the challenges, in spite of everything that is happening around you, don't give up. You got to continue. Be steadfast. Be firm. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. Let, let, let me wrap it up with, I can remember 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 3, which speaks of, of the perilous time. And how men will be lovers of themselves. They will be boasters and they will be proud and untownful and holy and you know the many things that are, are mentioned there. And the writer went further to say of this sort are they which creep into houses and and, 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 and and lead captive silly women laden with sin, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Sometimes we have persons like those among us. You keep teaching and teaching and teaching, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And because they have nothing within the devil is out there watching and, 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 and like a lion just waiting to, 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 to pounce on them and to snatch them and, and take them out of the fellowship. So we are warned of these things. But Paul the apostle have been through a lot of persecution, a lot of sufferings. And he make himself an example for us. And in, in, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 he said, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But hear what he said further. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But when all of that is happening around you, hear the encouragement that he gives. Hear what he said now. He said, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. We got right back to the learning, to the teachings. Continue in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And the writer went further to say, All scriptures, all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Amen. So we have known the words of God from a child. If we don't make it, it's not because we don't know. It's not a lack of knowing, because we know. So I'm encouraging you, saints, continue. It doesn't matter what is happening around you, continue. Mm -hmm. In spite of the trials, in spite of the tests, continue in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. Paul in the scripture said that, let him that is taught in the word communicate with him that teacheth. So both teacher and student must communicate that is also good for fellowship. The person that is taught must communicate with him that teacher. And that is good for us. So my saints, be strong and have a good courage. The writer is saying that the day of the Lord is at hand, is coming. And there was a time when the church should not be 
I mean, forsaking assembly as the manner of some are. That's what the scripture said. This is their manner. This is their behavior. This is what many do. They refuse to assemble. And because of that, they are not able to grow in grace. We are asked not to be like them. Amen? Amen. So I'm saying it doesn't matter what. Christ is there for you and he is the answer. And I, I would just use this little song just to close. And if there's someone you, you're burdened and you have an issue and, and you would love to be prayed for, at the end of this song, you can come because the song is going to tell you where you can find the answer. Amen? If you ever feeling down and like you have nowhere to go If you're feeling like an outcast As your problems overflows Just remember there is someone And all it takes is for you to know Is that God is the answer and God answers prayer. He sees every weakness, every trials, every mountain and seas. He sees every teardrops and he wipes them for me. I get down on my knees and say, Savior, Help me please, one thing is for certain, is my God answers prayer. You may be broken and feel battered, but your strength will surely come in the midst of all your heartaches. Your battles have already won. Just remember in the hard times. Don't give up. Don't say you're done. For God is the answer. And God answers prayer. He sees every weakness. Every trial. Every mountain and sea, he sees every teardrops and he wipes them for me. Just get down on your knees and say, Savior, help me please. One thing is for certain. Is my God answers prayer. Is there one tonight who would love to be prayed for? As you listen to what the words of the song is saying. He sees every weakness. Every trials. Every mountain and sea. He sees every teardrops. And he wipes them for me. Just get down on your knees and say, Savior, help me please. One thing is for certain, is my God answers prayer. You may be broken and feel battered, but your strength will surely come. In the midst of all your heartaches, your battles have already won. Just remember, in the hard times, don't give up, don't say you're done. For God is the answer, and God answers prayer. Oh, he sees every weakness.
weakness, every trials, every mountain and sea. He sees every teardrop and he wipes them for me. I get down on my knees and say, Savior, help me please. One thing is for certain is my God and Loving God and our Father, we honor you, we glorify your name. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your words that have gone forth. We know, Almighty God, it shall not return to you void. We know, Heavenly Father, it fell on good ground. And in due season, Heavenly Father, we believe that it will germinate and bring forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Father, we thank you for those even at the altar right now. Oh, mighty God, being prayed for. You know their situation. You know what they desire. Oh, heavenly Father, you promise to supply every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We pray that you meet the needs of the saints, meet the needs of these loved ones. And even those among us, heavenly Father, who are not saved. Oh, mighty God, I pray that you will send salvation to their heart. I pray that you will reveal your righteousness. Make yourself known to them, Heavenly Father, that they will understand that almost persuaded will not do it. But, oh God, that they can come just as they are without one plea. And that your blood was shed for them. And as you bid them come to thee, oh Lamb of God, we pray that they will come. Speak to their heart now. Worry their conscience, we pray. Give them no peace, Heavenly Father, until they come to the decision of acknowledging you. As Lord and Savior, bless the church, bless the congregation. Remember every member of this church, even the absent ones. Heavenly Father, even as they go to work throughout the week, mighty God. We pray that you keep them safe from all harm and danger, accidents seen and unseen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will keep your children safe. Bless us now, we pray. Heavenly Fathers, we look to you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. And we tell you thanks for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Thanks for your patience. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Ruel. Let's stand together.
thank you for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Ruel. We thank you, Lord, for um, protecting him and helping him all of this season as he's working, Lord Jesus. We pray that you would continue to strengthen him and, and help him as he finishes off these last two weeks of harvest. And we pray you would bless him as he returns home to Jamaica to his family and that it would be a wonderful reunion, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, God, for him coming and encouraging us tonight. And we just pray, Lord, we would um, encourage one another as we meet together and as we fellowship, Lord, and as we learn about you. We give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, just one thing. So next Sunday night is um, a music night and testimony and prayer. So I just wanted to put the bug in your ear. You could invite. It's a good night to invite. It's always a good a good night or a good day to invite, but um, invite your friends, invite your neighbors, and um, have a great week, everyone. God bless. <laughs>